Hi guys, I just wanted to come on here and say happy Mother's Day to all the amazing moms out there, especially to my amazing mom. This video we filmed back during the holidays when my mom came to visit me and it is a little bit of a longer video, but I really wanted to just put it out there because my mom is my biggest supporter when it comes to YouTube and this whole wig craziness. And I thought that it made sense to have a video with her, especially a video with her on Mother's Day because she is the most amazing mom. So this is the video for you guys. I hope you like it and happy Mother's Day to all you amazing moms out there. And I will see you guys on the next video. Hi guys. So today we are going to be doing my mom's makeup. So I wanted to come on here today since my mom is in town visiting and I decided we should do her makeup because why not? I have all this makeup and whenever someone comes over to my house, the two things we usually do is play with makeup and play with wigs. So that's kind of what we're going to do today. Um, I have done my mom's makeup before. She does usually wear makeup every single day. So I know it's kind of weird for her to be sitting here in front of the camera without any makeup on. Um, <laughs> but she just washed her face and she put on a moisturizer so that her skin is nice and moisturized before we do all this fun stuff. Um, she does have drier skin, obviously. She has a lot of the same issues that I have as far as like she has redness in her face, larger pores. She has like the same forehead. This is this, this is a Hannah forehead that we have here with the really 5 million wrinkles that we have going on. There are other things because of the age of her skin and just, things that happen as you get older that we would address a little bit differently um, than you would with someone who has more elasticity or has less puffiness or things like that. So I will talk about the differences of what I'm doing to her versus what I would do to myself, just so you know. And yeah, we're gonna do kind of a full glam look. So it'll be a little bit more than what she normally wears every day, cause why not? And we can play with wigs afterwards when we're done. So the first thing, like I said, she's already washed her face, put moisturizer on. I am going to go ahead and use this uh, glowy makeup serum just because I, she did say she has drier skin and stuff like that. And this really just kind of helps give you like more of a supple dewy kind of base to start with before you add on anything else. A little bit goes a long way. You don't need much. And I usually just cheek, cheek, a little bit on the nose and do it right here and like two drops on your forehead. So you don't, it's like half of a squeeze of this is all you need. So last a decent amount of, of time, which is nice. And then we're just gonna rub this in with our hands. I'm gonna try not to stab her <laughs> with my daggers. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna put on her face is primer. You currently use a primer, right? I Correct. know we've tried several primers with you. Mm -hmm. uh, which one are you using? I actually went out and tried the e.l.f., but it's the illuminating uh, liquid, and I just found it went on very nice. It made my skin feel really good afterwards and really seemed to help more so than even the caked putties. And I think I originally tried it after watching one of your videos and you were comparing the e.l.f. brand, and I thought, well, oh, since yeah. I'm trying, um, some of these things, I, you know, I could at least could try it without spending a lot of money to make sure I liked it before I, you know, kind of dabbled some more. The nice thing about Elf too, it's like, there's not always a ton of product in their bottles, especially with like the pumps. I will say like, it's a little deceiving the way they package their stuff. So make sure you're checking the actual weights of the product when you purchase stuff from them. But for the price, like they're really they're cheap and they're accessible. You can go to a Target, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and almost all of them carry elf. So you don't have to like special order it or mm -hmm. go to Sephora or Ulta or like make a special trip. So we're going to actually be using a higher end brand. It's a Sephora brand is what I would call it classified as um, it's milk, but we're going to go ahead and use this because like I said, again, since you need more moisture in your mm -hmm. face, everything I am going to use, I want to try to be adding moisture, not taking moisture away, especially mattifying primers can actually kind of remove some of that. Then you're going to have like a cakey face. Mm -hmm. Also with someone who has more li fine lines and also some more puffiness in certain areas, less is more with a lot of things. So whereas like I can, I can, I don't want to, it's not good for your skin, but like I could cake on my foundation and probably wouldn't see a huge, huge difference. It would settle in a couple weird places, but it wouldn't be drastic. Whereas with like my mom's skin, if I put too much foundation somewhere, it's going to actually age her even more. So you just want to be careful when you have more mature skin. That's what we're going to use. <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> um, you want to, uh, less is more. So you can always add more, which I pretty much say about everything. You can always mm -hmm. add more on, but you, it's a lot harder to take it off once it's on and you don't have to start all over again. So just 
start off with small amounts of things and just add as you feel like you need to. Um, so you can tell with this primer, if you feel that. Mm -hmm. So that's good. If you want it to have a little bit of a tack when you go to pull your hand away, um, that is what's going to help your foundation actually stick to your face. So just always check that. And also it might not be tacky because you haven't let it dry enough. Like you want to let it, you know, you don't want to throw it on and then throw your foundation on right afterwards either. Cause then everything's just going to slip and slide and blend together. Yeah. Slip and slide. Sounds messy. You don't ever want to use this and <laughs> slip and slide <laughs> when it. it comes to do with your face. Right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use the Amazonian, um, clay foundation. You have a foundation that you use currently that you like, correct? Correct. What is it? Uh, it's it. And I have a couple different shades that depending on the season, I'll mix match and I've been pretty happy with it. I've never used their foundation before. Um, well, I think for me, I don't want to keep buying tubes and tubes of more and more foundation um, while I try to figure out this, that, whatever. So I think once you find one that you can work with and that you like, um, it's always available when you need it. Because I've had some that when I went to go back to get it was gone or they discontinued it. That happens to me all the time. Yeah. so mad. And I haven't had any problems with it. Um, it doesn't seem to settle as heavy. Uh, some of them really will settle, like you're saying, into your lines. Mm -hmm. And this one partic you know, in particular um, doesn't seem to do that. So, All right. So the next thing we're going to do is go on with a concealer. I'm going to use... How did you feel about the concealer you used this morning? Did it was I good. You? Okay. So I'm going to use good. the same concealer. So I, my, my mom came up here with like just a backpack because we're not paying for bags. <laughs> um, <laughs> We're not that kind of, we're not those kind of people. Um, you guys see me talk about cover effects all the time. I love their products. Love, love, love their products. And I'm going to go ahead and obviously put my concealer where I would normally put concealer at this point. You want to take that product. Don't add any extra product, but you want to take that product and just come around the whole eyelid because we are going to be doing her eyeshadow. So this will also act as an eyelid primer as well. You can buy eyelid primer, but... It's concealer wrapped in a different, like, it's not. Concealer works just as well. I've never bought an eyeshadow primer where I was like, oh my God, this is a game changer. So do what you want. If you want to, there are good primers out there. So another thing we are going to try. So like, it's funny because we talk about makeup stuff all the time over the phone. I'm like, oh, you should try this. Oh, you should try this. Oh, I ordered this. I'm going to try it and let you know how it is. So one of those items is the eyebrow, the tattoo eyebrow pencils. So you guys all know, like I am, I struggle with my eyebrows. It's one of the weakest things in my makeup bag. <laughs> I'm not great at it. And I've really been trying to focus this year on just being better at my eyebrows. I love those perfect Instagram eyebrows that just look like flawlessly amazing, but it's just not, not where I'm at right now in the makeup eyebrow game. But I've been trying all these products, and one of these products that I really um, have, I really love it, and I started out with like a cheap Amazon one, and I moved to the more expensive one, is this pencil. So it has like these little brushes on it that kind of give you the illusion of eyebrow hair, so it doesn't look like you're like caking stuff on your eyebrows, and it looks more natural, mm -hmm. and it makes, supposed to make it a lot easier to do your eyebrows. The biggest issue we have with my mom is that she has blonde, blonde, blonde eyebrows. So I do have the blonde shade here, but if you look online, when you look at the blonde shade, it still looks darker than what she's wanting. She's not wanting to darken up her eyebrows too much. She kind of just wants to keep them their natural color, so they match her hair and everything like that. So we're going to try the blonde. I think it might be a little bit darker than she's used to, but I think it's going to look good. So we're going to test it out and see. I feel like we just try all the things we talked about trying yeah. while she's here. Because we're like, oh, we need to try this. And we need to try this. And we need to try this. So this is one of those things. Yeah. So we're going to try it out. We're not sure. We might not like it. If not, okay. I have a backup. But we're going to test it out. You have such thin eyebrows. I know. Oh, my God. Because she has such thin eyebrows, and I actually want to give her a little bit more of a fuller eyebrow so she can see what it looks like. I'm going to go in with an eyebrow gel first. Um, this eyebrow gel is by Mad Love. And I'm going to go in with just a clear eyebrow gel just to kind of help shape her eyebrow hairs where I want them to go. Because right now she has a very awesome thick eyebrows, but they're very thin. So we're going to kind of manipulate them to make them look a little bit wider first, mm -hmm. and then we're going to apply the product. This also will help the product stay on as well. So it's a dual functional situation. The only thing I will say when you do this with an eyebrow gel is if you have 
any crazy long eyebrow hairs that maybe you're hiding, like <laughs> like that one, <laughs> like these, you either need to make a choice to trim them or brush them back because, um, yeah, you got some long hairs in there. Wow. When you get, do you get your eyebrows done or do you do them yourself? I, I trim them up. It's probably been a little But while. someone Sorry. doesn't do them for you. Because usually when I go to get mine done, they actually take, like, the comb and the scissors wow. and, like, trim them for me. Wow. Yeah. Look at those Hannah brows. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! Now I know where my caterpillar brows come from. I, didn't I don't have... I, mine I get mean, long, but I get, they get cut. I never thought about the fact that you were going to be brushing them. No, you're fine. Anything, it's but, cool. Um, I do uh, take a, a comb and scissors, and I just go ahead and... So you do your... Oh, yeah. I, for the most part, trim mine, too, but once every couple months I'll go and have them done and they always cut it I never used to do anything with my eyebrows like I remember you yell at me all the time because I wouldn't even like pluck them you'd be like you have caterpillar eyebrows yeah they would get pretty bad <laughs> so they I don't have like eyebrows like this I just don't have the patience if it's too much will take too much time or too much work I'm not doing it I'm like eh, it's okay I'll have bushy eyebrows and now guess what everyone out there who's my age has like no eyebrows because they plucked the crap out of them. And guess what? Because of my laziness, I still have my eyebrows. So who was really right in this situation? Cause I think I was, I'm just saying I lost my tails. That's really all I lost. Cause you would pluck them to the point where they'd have like one yeah, hair, like one hair. And I only have that one hair left. It's the only hair that survived. Right. Two thousands. <laughs> and that's, that's really what happened. I think we just plucking them for so long, you know, eventually you're going to, they're going to damage that root and it just doesn't grow back. Well, yeah. I mean, overplucking is a, is a thing. Mm -hmm. Like, and a lot of us are now in our thirties and forties who are part of that trend are now like suffering the consequences of it. Cause none of us thought we would ever not have pin straight. I don't think we cared about pencil brows at that time. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do setting powder now. Um, this is the translucent, um, one size ultimate setting powder by Patrick star, which just came out. And I love, 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 love this setting powder. <laughs> I had a feeling it was me good because I just, he, he takes such pride in everything he does that I knew that when he came out with his own line, it was going to be good, but you can still be disappointed. Like that happens. And it makes your face look awesome. And I'm not going to obviously bake on her face. I don't bake on my face either because of my lines and stuff. I'm just going to take a very small amount of product and be brushing it onto her face with just a nice fluffy brush. So the next step in my makeup process and really in anybody's makeup process should be setting spray. I found out today my mom does not use setting spray. I didn't know she wasn't using it. If I had known that, Oops. I would have told her to start using Because one of the things I said to her last night was, well, you don't have any makeup on. And she's like, no, I've been wearing makeup all day. And the problem is because she's not using <laughs> she a setting spray that. to kind of lock her makeup in. It just is fading throughout the day more than it would if she was using a setting mm -hmm. spray. So I normally do what I've just done, put my setting powder on, and then I do a, a layer of setting spray mm -hmm. before I start everything else. And then at the end, I would do another layer of setting spray. And that just kind of locks it all in <laughs> so we're gonna use setting spray on your face and i'm gonna send you home with setting spray because i didn't realize we're using it and i no, feel like it's a staple sorry. makeup when you're using like setting powder you should kind of always use a setting spray the other nice thing about setting spray is that it um kind of melts everything in so it's a little bit more it, you don't have like a layer of powder on your face right like it just kind of like settles it all down Oh, he used my hand. Oh, yes. I'm a fan. This is like the best ten dollars on Amazon you will ever spend. I have multiple ones because I lose them all the time. But these things are awesome for drying your setting spray, or drying lash glue, or if you get hot, like you're having a hot flash while you're doing your makeup or whatever. You can dry your liquid <laughs> lipstick. Like it's whatever. The best. It's multi. It's multi ten dollars. You should get one if you don't have one because they and they come in all different cute colors. So why not? I've started a collection. I have like a black one, a green one, a pink one. <laughs> Just because I lose them, I can't find them, mm -hmm. or I can't find. I can always. It charges with a cord, which is nice. You don't have to replace it with batteries, but you can't lose the cord. So I either can't find the cord or I can't find the <laughs> the fan. So they're always either dead or missing. So I just buy another one. It's ten bucks. <laughs> like contour bronze blush highlight um you don't do any of those things but blush right now currently correct, correct? 
with contouring, um, especially on a more mature face. <laughs> I don't want to use like certain is that the word we want to, is that the word we want to use <laughs> mature I feel like you have mature skin oh that's saying? nice more experienced traveled <laughs> so when I'm contouring her face normally like I always say to you guys um a lot of times people like always think oh you should like this when you contour because it helps show you where your jawbone is but especially um when you are trying to not accentuate this here when you go to contour, if you did that, you'd literally be darkening and deepening that area, which you don't want to do because it's already sun oh, sinking in. So that. you would want to come right above that spot. So you're going to cheat your cheekbone, essentially, and you're going to make it a little bit higher. So people are looking at that area. And then this kind of just blends in to the background <laughs> and you won't see as much. So here, if I took my hand like that and I measured to see, I would be coming right to about this part of her ear and instead I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to start it right here and just have it follow. So it's going to be right above that area and that way you're not bringing your cheekbone down, you're lifting it and you're mm -hmm. elevating it. You know, light to start with, I don't want anything too crazy drastic for her, um, but I do want to give her a little bit of the contour. She has a really defined jawline for the most part except for right here. So we're going to give her a little bit more of a jawline here. Here, she doesn't need as much because she has a pretty defined jaw. I think this is like a Hannah, <laughs> Hannah jaw, too. We both have that thing. I mean, I have it now. I didn't used to have it, but it's there. <laughs> it was hidden, but it's there. Um, but like I said, like, just start with a little bit of product and always make sure you're tapping it off because if you don't do that, it'll always be too much. But so like I said, I'm just coming in and I'll show you on this other side to make it a little bit easier for you guys to tell what I'm doing right here, but I'm going to... Um, so I'm starting right here at the ear, bringing it in, coming up, blending it up into that line that I already have. And then I'm going to come right here, like literally follow your jawline. And then I'm going to come right here. And I actually really purposefully don't want to round it because that'll help give you that illusion that you have more of a chiseled jawline. Cause that's really the only place that you have a little bit less, like you're not as tight here <laughs> she's really trying to choose her words carefully <laughs> then we're going to go ahead and take our kabuki blending brush right here when you're blending contour you always want to go up like i said go back up into that ear area um when you're doing down here you want to come across but you also want to come down a little bit so you're blending it into that neck area so like you don't have this crazy dark line because then that's going to look strange on you as well and if you feel like it's a little too dark you can always take your setting powder because that's a lighter translucent and kind of just Go a little bit over it under here just to kind of lighten it up if you feel like you need to. All right, now we're gonna go in with a blush. I'm gonna be using Cover FX. Surprise, surprise. Cover FX and Tarte. Like, I feel like if I could pick two brands to use for the rest of my life, that would be who I'd pick. I'm just gonna be using this really ni nice, neutrally kind of mauve light pink. It's like a blush, literally, like blush color blush. A blush blush. It's a blush blush. That was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> And you're just going to go right above the um, contour line. And it's okay for it to blend in a little bit with that contour line. And she does not want a lot of blush. So we're just going, we're doing right here, the temple. And we're just coming down to where the contour line stops. And that's it because she's weird about blush. I don't know. I love blush. I have a blush problem. So the one thing that I notice is, again, kind of like with your eyebrows, where if your eyebrows are blonde and you do your whole face, they mm -hmm. kind of disappear. If you don't focus a little bit of attention on your nose. Um, the same thing kind of happens. It's like, oh, you have all this makeup everywhere and your nose is just like plain. So adding a little bit of like a dimension with adding a tiny bit of contour, even if you don't want to do a whole lot, or adding just a little dab of blush on the tip of your nose, it kind of just makes, it ties your nose into the rest of your face. And your nose is a very predominant feature. It sticks out. sticks out. Like <laughs> you should do something with it to kind of blend it together, I guess. So I always try to kind of do more than just throw highlighter on my face because highlighter sometimes on your nose just looks disco ball-y and you're drawing attention to your nose <laughs> for the wrong reasons. Disco ball -y? Like I feel like there's an appropriate <laughs> amount of highlighter. Like I use a lot of highlighter, but on my nose, I'm very, very, very no, careful about how much, much I put on. Next. I do. I live on the edge and a lot of people normally do their eyes first. I usually do it the opposite way. I do the base of my face, my blush and I my contour too. Then I do my eyeshadow, um, but I always do my highlighter last because my highlighter is going to go right here 
in this area usually. And if I do have any mess ups or fallout, that's the exact area where that's going to go. So if I put highlighter there and I have to clean anything up, I'm going to have to reapply my highlighter anyway. So always wait till the end to do my highlighter. So we're going to go ahead and do her eyes now. And I just want to do a nice neutral smoky eye. I don't want it to be anything crazy. We're not going crazy, crazy, but, um, no orange, no reds or blues no. or I don't tend, if you guys notice too, like with my makeup, I don't usually really use a whole lot of color. I stick to the mauves and the neutrals and just those like traditional smoky eye colors. So we're going to go ahead and kind of stick with the mauve blush, um, color palette we have going here. And I'm going to be using this holiday Morphe palette right here. And I'm just going to be doing the three color staple smoky eye that I do pretty much on any makeup video because it's so easy for anybody to do. Depending on your eye shape, you would put things in different places, which like with her, her eyes are a little bit more sunken in than mine would be as far as where her eyelid and stuff is. So we'll do her crease a little bit differently. Um, she has a little bit more skin in her eyelids just from her skin aging and maturing. <laughs> Um, so we're going to go ahead and go in with a neutral color to start with, and you're going to close your eye for me and then you're going to open your eye. Just there you go lightly. So I always recommend opening your eye like this because it really shows you where your crease is going to be. And you can use your crease as a guide to where you're putting that, especially when you're doing the neutral shade, the neutral shade is very close to your skin tone. Um, so it's not going to be like crazy looking. But I always recommend doing it like this. And then you just come up just a tad and go right above. And that just brings your crease up and in the exact spot where you need it. And then we're going to go in with Message Read, which is just a nice mauve color. And we're going to darken this up. And I want to bring this up just a little bit higher because I want to cheat her crease a little bit because she does have the skin. And that'll kind of help um, hide that a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and before I go any crazier and further, I'm going to go ahead and take the original body language color I used and I'm just going to bring those shades down here ever so slightly because it just makes a more full eye look instead of having eyeshadow and then nothing. Darker. All right. And then we're going to go in right on the edges. This is a literally three colors. So you can do this with any three shades. You want a lighter shade, a medium shade and a darker shade. And then your fourth, if you want to, would be a shimmer or a glitter or something for your lid. But for the crease, which you could do with absolutely nothing but those three shades, and you can pick any three shades in any palette, lighter, medium, dark, and you can do this. So we're going to go in and I'm using the same palette here. I'm going to go in with this, make it official. You do with the darker shade, want to make sure it is a decently darker shade, just because you really want to have that drastic um, darkness right here in that outer corner. Cause that's really what gives you that smoky effect and just come up just a little bit. You don't want to go past the place where you have your other shades. And we're just kind of, you see, I'm just kind of tapping it into place. I'm going to go back in with that blending brush that I used, um, originally with my lighter shades. And I'm just going to take that and I'm going to go right here where the two meet. And I'm just going to, um, soften up that line. So it's not too, too crazy. And I'm just going to take that blending brush too and just kind of tap right here just to lighten it up because the whole idea is it's supposed to be a shadowy, smoky eye, but you don't want it to be like half of your eye is dark and the other half is light. You want it to be blended together. And then we're going to go ahead and again, I'm going to take a much smaller brush. So something very little like this, that's going to be more of like a detail brush and go into that darker shade. And we're going to bring this darker shade, just look up for me, right here about one third of the eyelid, uh, the under eye, just to bring that color down and in. So you don't have like a harsh line where it ends. One thing I will say is with her skin, because we know that she doesn't do well with having too much product under her eye. Normally, if I had some fallout or something that was messed up, I would go in with more concealer and just hide it. But with her skin, I don't want to add any more liquid on top of the dry that I've already put on. So I'm just going to take the setting powder that we used earlier, which is a lighter shade with just like a loose blending brush that's clean. And I'm just going to kind of take that powder and just kind of help brush away and hide any extra like fallout that's there. And it's also going to help set under her eye a little bit now that we're done with all the powder um, and be kind of like set where it needs to be without adding too much heavy product under there because we don't want to um, 
make it sink in. And also will brighten up the under eye a little bit this way as well. Better than her normal skin tone. Okay, so for her lid, we're gonna be not extra. So you can either with foils and things like that, you can either use your hand or you can use like a flatter, a more dense brush. So I'm just going to use a dense brush here because I have dagger nails and I don't want to murder your eyeball. Close Pretty your eye. Sure. And you're going to just apply this to the lid space that doesn't have anything on it yet. You want to come all the way into the inner corner and you want to come a little bit past where the darker shade is, but we're going to go ahead and just blend it in. So it's okay for it not to come too far. Ooh. Oh, you know what? This is another thing the pan's great for. Got a little too much right there. Let's just blow it off and you don't even know. Look at that. You just want to use kind of just like a flatter brush here and just apply it. You want to kind of pat it on again with, um, I, when your eyes have extra skin on them, you don't want to do a whole lot of rubbing because the skin is moving with the brush. So the brush isn't actually moving on your eyelid. You're just moving your skin on your eyeball, if that makes sense. So you want to do a lot more padding than rubbing because it's just not going to go where you want it to. The product's not going to it's not going to blend because you're not blending. You're literally like, if I go like this right now, you're going to like, you know what I mean? It doesn't do what it's supposed to. Now we're going to do her eyeliner mascara. And another thing we're going to try out that we've been talking about are magnetic lashes. Well, I, <laughs> so this is the thing. I think you'll be fine with magnetic lashes because you just have to draw a line on your eye. No, I think what I saw. And then you just pop them on. When I saw the video, the, the thought was, okay, glue scares me. Right. The first time trying glue, what if? I, I kept having envisioning, I don't know, glue stuck to my eyeball and I don't know, having to the emergency room. I don't know. I'm just, just scared to do it. That's instantly what popped in my head. I couldn't help it. But when I saw you doing the magnetic, I it just looked like, oh, I could do this. You know, and maybe I wouldn't, you know, do some of the crazy ones that I see out there. But just to have thicker eyelashes... Um, I like the look, yeah. you know, and it looked like it really was easy enough to uh, give a try. Well, and it gives you the volume that you're looking for with mascara. And mm -hmm. especially I know one issue that you have really bad with mascara is mascara coming underneath your eyes right. because like you're trying to get nice long lashes. So you're doing multiple layers and things like that. So with the doing the lashes instead, you can use less mascara, which might help with that fallout of your right. mascara that you have. Yeah. Another option too, if you end up not like magnetic lashes, is trying. Have you seen the video where I did the adhesive pen? So instead of I did, glue, I it's saw that one too. Yeah, you brush on. So that might be it, something you might like too. It seemed a little less. Like maybe we'll try that on Saturday, Saturday Sunday, okay. so you can just see if you like that too. But I think that the magnetic lashes you're gonna like. And magnetic lashes we're gonna use. They're the Chelsea Smith Cosmetics lashes, and they're the Valentina collection. And I'm using these specifically because these are very natural. <laughs> they're not crazy long, <laughs> like you guys know. I wear these are actually very very. These are mild for me. I usually wear crazy lashes, but these are like really great mm -hmm. starter lashes because you have a nice, solid, just regular natural lash. You have one that has a little bit of a flare and then you have one that has kind of like the, the crossing. So it gives you like a nice little idea of the style, different styles mm -hmm. out there. So you can kind of see, oh, I really like the flare ones or so I like one more of the store. So I want to do the middle. These are the like the middle dramatic. So Leah which has a little bit of this nice little flare, but it's not too crazy. I The only ones I ever really wear in this kit are the Padme because mm -hmm. they're like the most dramatic out of the three. These ones I think would look like invisible on your eyes. Yeah, they, they would add a little bit more thickness, but they're not going to do a whole lot lengthwise or anything like that. So these um, ones here that taper off and get longer are also going to help kind of hide any of these little crow's feet situation that's happening in the corner as well. So it kind of cheats a shadow mm -hmm. on your eyelid and you won't see those areas that maybe bother you a little bit more. So I think that you're going to like okay. more of the flare. I mean, I've heard do this herself because people, I get freaked out when someone comes at me with a pencil to my eyelid <laughs> and my, not to my eyelid, but to my eyeball. And I like to put my, I put eyeliner in my waterline and I always say all the time, like, one of the trend, one of the things I always do that like people say now you're not really supposed to do or it's not appropriate makeup like the proper makeup technique is putting eyeliner in my waterline and the reason I put eyeliner in my waterline is because of this woman <laughs> because growing up my whole life my mom always put eyeliner in her waterline she even used to sometimes do it up here which now they say is great to do when you put lashes on because it darkens mm -hmm. everything up but before like people were like that's weird so like I always put eyeliner in my waterline because that's what my mom always did. 
So she's an expert at eyeliner, so I'm not worried about her not knowing how to put eyeliner on. So I'm going to have her do her own eyeliner and her waterline just because I feel like I feel more comfortable with that. She's going to feel more comfortable with that. Her eyeball is going to feel more comfortable with that. And we don't want her eye to start watering because then we're going to start messing up, you know, our work. So you said my waterline. You want me to go inside up top here? I want you to do your inside. Inside. Yeah, but up Isn't top that what here? you do? No, I stopped doing that a long time ago. So what ago. do you do? <laughs> really? Yes. So what do you do? Where do you put it usually? Right along the eye eyelash line. So where? That's fine. But not on the inside. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to put it on the inside if you don't want to. Okay. And this is the Tarte Sex Kitten um, eyeliner. Oh, yes. Her, I have to be her mirror holder. <laughs> yes. Oh, you go where I go. That's where I do it, too. Sometimes I go inside. Okay, so what we used to do was is inside. inside. Yeah, so okay. I still do that sometimes. You want me to just come out to about here? You can go all the way oh, to where you're... Yeah. Well, that's good right where you're at. Just don't go all the way into the inner corner, but like where you stop right there where your mm -hmm. lashes end. is The only mascara that I've ever found that stays on all day, will come off easily, is Avon Waterproof Mascara. I'm not dogging Avon. Any of you out there who sell Avon or buy Avon, like, more power to you. It's awesome. It, different makeup works for different people. But the mascara she's talking about in particular is probably one of the worst mascaras I've ever used. She, yeah, she, she hated it. <laughs> like, I absolutely couldn't stand it. So the fact that it's her favorite mascara. Yeah. Well, but I weird. think that's why there's so many products out there. We're all going to have things that are going to work for different reasons. I mean, I really tried to use different mascaras <clears throat> and see if there was something better. Um, you know, there's some other waterproof mascaras that waterproof, you get at a drug. Right? You always use it waterproof. That was the only kind that seemed <clears throat> to stay on. So we're going to use a different one that you it's haven't right. tried. But like I said, we're not going to be putting as much on as you normally would because right. we're putting the lashes on. So I feel like that's going to make a difference mm -hmm. where I'm still going to put it on, on, on your lower lashes. Cause that's what I always do too. I feel like it looks weird when you don't put mascara on your lower lashes yeah. and that might just be because I'm used to you always doing it. Well, um, plus if, if I don't have it, it, if I don't have mascara on and enough of it on, they literally don't, exist. they're not there. They're not there. The other day I did that and I was like, went somewhere and I was like, why does my face look so weird? Yeah, and I got too. home and I realized I didn't put any mascara <laughs> on my lower lashes. I was like, oh, that's what's wrong. Mm -hmm. So this is a weird brush. If you see, it's oh, just yeah. on this spot and this mm -hmm. spot. Um, I really like that it doesn't clump. Nice. Which is really nice. Um, it is not waterproof. It's okay. But I have had zero fall out with this and i'm sure she's gonna have it all over her face because there's something wrong with her freaking eyelashes <laughs> i think it's because her eyelashes are she doesn't have a long eyelashes but they do curl on the bottom they curl, they curl own, yeah. almost like all the way so they're mm -hmm. almost touching her skin and i think that that is partially the issue and i think that that's probably why no matter what she uses you end up having right. a little bit of it there because your eyelashes literally their your lower lashes are long yeah they are, they are decently and this, long yeah i mean that's what's Whereas, i never have a problem with the upper the upper's not really a big deal. and mine kind of stick out more straight mm -hmm. so they're not touching my face no, i think, I that's think probably i've what it i is. think i've gone after the waterproof uh several different kinds it's hard to find waterproof mascara and that seems to be the only one that would you know i live in florida so i've got the hot humid um, weather going oh, no. on. Okay. I could feel it. Spot. I felt it too. Oh no! <laughs> don't look. Don't look. It's okay. Like, and don't look open up or for close. Me. Don't look up. And you know, there's a few other waterproof mascaras out there, um, but I found that my eyelashes almost came out when I was trying to get them off. Oh. It was, you know, I mean, they were just, they were crazy. That's exactly what um, I wanted not in mascara. Right. I my eyelash to feel like it's falling off but with the regular you know eye cleanser mm. um and actually even when i haven't i've been out of the avon cleanser before and tried um you know something else it comes off really easily which is amazing because it stays on so well and comes off so i and i you know i use a lot of different products um just like just like you know jesse does i think you try things and you like certain kinds for whatever reason um i'm not that I'm going to buy one particular always brand of everything they own because maybe I love this eyeshadow, I love this mascara. So, you know, you kind of dabble and figure it out over. I will like the try years. if something new comes out and it's from a oh, brand yeah. I like. I'm always more inclined to try it, but Definitely. I'm not necessarily brand loyal to the point where I won't try something else because it's not the brand I use. I'm not that fancy. You see your lash, right? It literally touches the bottom of your, your skin. And you do see that when I have nothing there, you don't see any eyelash at all. Wow, that's it's crazy. like magic. 
That's so crazy. Okay, so now we're gonna add the lashes. So I always recommend if you are new to eyelashes, um, there's a couple things you want to have. One, you want to have something that you can use to grab the lashes. It makes it a lot easier than trying to use your hands, especially if you have like nails like I do going in, trying to like get it in the corners and stuff. This makes it a lot easier. You can also use this tool to press onto the nails to make, or onto the nails, onto the lashes to make sure they're really where you want them to be and they're not going to move. Um, this little kit, which is nice, does come with a little lash gripper. Um, I'm not in love with this style now that I have tried these styles. I just feel like this is a little bit easier to maneuver on my eye, but these work great if you don't have anything else. This kit also comes with its own magnetic liner. Another recommendation I always say is if you're going to do magnetic lashes, I recommend using the magnetic liner from the same brand just because it is made to work with those lashes and not every lash is the same. Some lashes Especially when it comes to magnetic lashes, have more magnets, less magnets, stronger magnets, thinner magnets, thicker magnets. The formula of the liner might be thicker or thinner or whatever, but they've tested them out with those lashes. So I don't like to mix brands of the lashes and the eyeliner. Less is more. So we're going to go in, just close your eye for me. And I'm thinking because she does have a little bit of extra skin, I'm going to take my hand and just kind of pull a little bit tight here just so that I can really see where the line is and I'm not going to get any skipping because I have that problem already with my eyes as well so now as far as the um liquid like the liquid yes. so this would look pretty much like liquid so mascara I mean right. liquid eyeliner which would scare me to death same problem because yes. I would just be convinced I'd be like all over the place um, what other kinds of, uh, is this the only Now Glamnetics, they just came out with, um, so I have, you, I have a video where I apply lashes using a lash adhesive pen, which I will link right there for you if you want to check it out. But, um, the cool thing about these are it's a felt tip instead, which I personally like better. I feel like I have more control right. of this. It's not like going to drip and get like gooey and drop a blob of anything anywhere. Glamnetics, who is an, a magnetic lash company just came out with magnetic liner in this felt tip format so and beautiful package well theirs isn't beautiful like this this is a different brand no but that one but that one's cool. gorgeous which is the only reason why i bought it i didn't even know if it was gonna work or not i was like oh my god the bling. it's glittery rose gold sparkly and it's makeup it has to be mine for well me. i feel like as a starting you know person who's going to maybe try these um more often i think I would want to work my way up. I mean, right. definitely don't want to go out there and spend and get the most uh, expensive ones while I'm messing them up and <laughs> figuring out how to use them or well, I started, how to take care of them. I started out with like the Kiss brand ones from Walgreens, like the drugstore brand ones, which are like $7 for the lash and the glue or whatever. Like they're not expensive. And now looking back at those, like when, if I went and I have some still and I'll pull them out, I'm like, these are so tiny and not good. But I loved them when I first started using them and it made me want to try more and it like opened up like the gateway for me. So start with a cheaper brand just to test the water and see what you like and what you don't like and then work your way up based on what you are looking mm -hmm. for and you notice this one doesn't have this. So maybe there's one out there that has, you know, X, Y, and Z. And now I have some magnetic lashes that have like eight magnets on them and they're like $36 a pair, but they're amazing but I don't wear them as often because they're my fancy lashes. Should we pull out the fan again? Or? Oh, yes, because this fan is amazing. The fact that it's thinner, it actually is perfect for doing this. And like you said, if you had something you wanted to dry, Well, like sometimes when I do my perfect. makeup in the bathroom, I start getting a little hot. And, like, I don't want to sweat, so I don't want to mess up my makeup, so I'll just, like, grab my fan. Like, it's it's very um, specific. Well, can, and also, very specific. it also yeah. has this really cool little... Ooh. Stand so it actually can sit like if you don't have a fan or something, it can sit on your vanity while you're doing your makeup and just kind of blow your face <laughs> ever so slightly. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. All right, so this is the middle one, Leah, which is a nice flare lash, and I think that she'll like that. It's not crazy, crazy. The bottom one might be a little bit too much, so I think we're gonna try the middle one. Okay, so we're just gonna take our little thing and we're gonna pop these on, and they're literally going to you're gonna feel them like grab onto your eyelash. Close your eyelash. Ready? So you just want to line them up where you want them to go. 
Some people, when I put lashes on them for the first time, their eyes start watering. Like, they feel like they can't keep their eyes open. They'll, like, be like, like, it feels heavy. (laughs) It's very, I've heard some really crazy stuff when I've done eyes, people eyelashes. So, that's good. You're not, like, blind or anything. No. We're we're good to go. Okay. But, like, that's it. Like, they're on. That's all I had to do. So, like I said, I'm going to follow that line. I'm just going to go right above it, and I'm just going to give her a line. Just, especially when you're doing, like, a smoky eye. I'm not going to give her a wing because she does have that skin there on the end. And we're kind of trying to conceal that. Um, but when you're doing a smoky eye, it's nice to have like a darker, you can look up now. And then you want to bring just to eliminate that harsh line of where the lash ends and your lid begins. You want to just bring with a liquid liner, bring it down to the inner corner of your eye. And it just helps elongate it and not make it look like your lash just stopped out of nowhere. Lipstick. We're going to stick with the same kind of mauve neutrally kind of lip. Um, this is similar to something like that you usually use. So mm-hmm. I feel like it's not too crazy it's offhand of what you use. And then we're going to be taking a lighter shade to do like the ombre kind of look. Sure. Um, which is like my new favorite thing to do because it makes your lips look bigger mm-hmm. without making your lips look bigger. Okay. This is essentially the same look I would put on my face. I just did the steps a little bit differently just because of her skin type, which is totally fine. No matter what kind of skin you have, if you have oily skin, you would do it a little bit differently. Dry skin, you would do a little bit differently. Yeah, and then the only other really big difference with more mature skin is that whatever you end up doing on your face, you need to kind of see how it goes throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do find that it's still sinking into the lines or, you know, it's it's creating, you know, when you think your makeup looks beautiful in the morning and you've done studying spray, you've done everything, which I wasn't doing, so I'll try. Um, and it still gets that then a little less product in those spots. It just seems that the more you add, the, the more issues you're going to have sometimes. So if you come up with that issue, that problem where it's setting in or it's causing, you just look at yourself and go, what happened? Mm-hmm. Try just a little less in those areas. I um, agree. Just enough to make it. Uh, or maybe you need more somewhere. Like you realize, well, Correct. like Pull my nose, attention. I'm like that with my nose. Like mm-hmm. I feel like I've just now finally, after doing my makeup for several years, figured out the right exact combination to keep it from my nose from separating the product. Right. Cause my nose is like my oily area. But I didn't know that until I, I wore it several eyebrows. times. You're what? I didn't look at my oh, eyebrows. Oh, your eyebrows. So what do you think? Oh, I can do big. It's hair. weird because so they Here. look like to me they look black. Yeah, they look really dark. But that's but they don't. So but what they look color like was eyebrows. this? That was blonde. Is this like one of the lightest ones out there? No, the Mad Love Brow Stamp, which we didn't. I don't have the blonde. Who? That one's Where, lighter. In what world is this blonde? It's just blonde. That it's is just, brown. It looks light brown. That is brown. It does look light brown. Total brown. It does. But I like it. It makes you look like you have eyebrows. And it still is matching the colors that are here in your hair. And, Mom, it does. It matches this color, all this color right here that you have. So, we just will agree to disagree. Uh, I really like your eyebrows like that. I Well, I maybe I'm not used to them, but to me now, because it, it, my eyebrows are naturally blonde and white. I think you're not used to it. Um them being dark is weird yeah it might just be weird i don't know i like it. i'll have to i'll have to see what do you think stanley so but i would like them to like be a little lighter like i think i mean <laughs> put them on the spot uh yeah uh, uh yeah. if any of you guys know a really good easy to use blonde <laughs> eyebrow Please. product like we're not down with the pomades we know we can't use those yeah. we don't need Simple. weird gels but like yeah. anything that you guys use that maybe if you have blonde eyebrows and you struggle with that if right. you have a brand out there let us know in the comments below because sh- we've been trying we've this been is searching. not blonde that's not blonde but i really that like is it brown. but i like it i like it so. i think they look good but <laughs> it's too much for her so blonde if you guys know of any let me yeah. know in the comments below let me know what you guys think about this video also um shout out to my mom if you want for being on camera <laughs> Um, and if you guys are new to my channel and don't forget to subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notifications on any videos I do in the future and give me a like on this video. We would really appreciate it if it was useful or helpful or entertaining to you at all. (laughs) Let us know and share the love and thank you guys for watching and we will see you on the next video.